Good morning brothers and sisters and welcome to Happy Sabbath. It's good to be with you today that we can share the sacrament. So I hope that you have your emblems ready. We are at my house in Claycross, Chesterfield, Derbyshire, or Derbyshire as they say in America. Yeah, uh, we had a nice hot day yesterday and uh, we had a good meal out. Kyle brought me fish and chips and it was lovely. So I'm going to ask Kyle to open with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this morning we are able to be here to celebrate Thy sacrament. I would like to wish all my brothers and sisters throughout the world a happy and blessed sacrament Saturday. May our Lord and Saviour be with you and watch over you all always. In his most sacred name, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. We thank you for Kyle for his testimony on the Book of Mormon last week. I've got a notification for you. Uh, back to normal with the prayer night on Thursday night. Uh, so I don't think I need to send the link out for that. But, but we're back to normal. I stress back to normal because... I've got my summer camp meeting on Monday night. So I hope you're having a good day, whatever time it is, wherever you are. I know you've got your emblems ready. And uh, if you'd like to get ready to take the sacrament. At this time, we welcome our present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So, if you'd like to bow or kneel, as I will say the blessing on the bread, O God the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son and Always remember him and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your reverence there. And I pass you over to Kyle now, who's going to say the blessing on the water. So if you'd like to bow or kneel, whatever you prefer. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this water to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may always witness unto Thee, God the Eternal Father, that they do always remember Him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So here you go, Carl. So that concludes our sacrament this morning. And I've got another question for Kyle today. Uh, we're going to talk about priesthood today and our, yeah. and our time in the um, LDS church. So I wanted to talk, 
ask Kyle how the priest came to be in the LDS church. Well, for me, to start with, when I received the Aaronic priesthood in the LDS church, it was, I'd say, it was a marvellous experience. It was something to actually go through to have elders and maybe even the bishop place his hands upon your head and say the blessings and that and bestowing on you the office of priest neuronic priesthood yeah. for me and my brother andrew that was a very happy occasion so i'm going to speak about when i got the ironic yeah. priesthood which was in scumfold i was baptized in 1996 uh and i got the ironic priest stood shortly after that and uh i used to uh go out home teaching and really enjoyed that and spent some time with the missionaries and uh and then i sort of went away from the church and come back but you stayed didn't you yeah i got my my full priesthood my eldership in chesterfield here many years later and I think you got it at the same did, time. Yeah. And Andrew. And Andrew. Yeah. We both received the Melchizedek priesthood and in which we were ordained to the office of elder. Yeah. In the Melchizedek priesthood in the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter day Saints. Again, for me and Andrew, that was a another special occasion, another special Sunday. You know. And we got to bless the sacrament. Yeah. The sacrament, past the sacrament. And it was a marvellous thing to do because when we went into church, we never knew who was going to be asked to maybe pass the sacrament or yeah. say the sacrament, you know what I mean? And the bishop had just come up to someone individual and say, Kyle, Andrew, Michael maybe, you know, would you bless the sacrament this morning? Yeah. The sacrament. And to me and Andrew, and I'm sure it was the same for Brother Michael, a most wonderful thing to be asked. Yeah. So what do you know of the history, how it all began, that the priesthood come in to Joseph Smith? Well, the priesthood into Joseph Smith, it all goes back from the beginning, when he first seen them two personages. And if I can remember correctly, Joseph was first ordained into the Iranic priesthood. There was they... another person there as well. Yeah. Uh, I think it was John the Baptist, wasn't it? It was John, John the Baptist, Baptist who did, but he was Chat with uh, Oliver Cowdery. Yeah. And um, he received the priesthood and the Iranic priesthood, and it was later in time that the prophet obtained the Melchizedek priesthood. Yeah. And it's true, every time. Now people are ordained or baptised because on that day when they went to get the priesthood, yes, but, yeah. John the Baptist baptized, baptized yeah. them as well. And then they referred with their hands the priesthood all together. So now I think anybody gets baptised in our say the reorganised Church of Jesus Christ, the LDS Church, in theory... It's going down in the lineage, you know, yeah. from from them to being baptized. Even the community of Christ, well, but they say they from, wouldn't, they wouldn't, uh, they don't acknowledge that. Yeah. The community. I think what surprised me as well when I received the Melchizedek priesthood with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, I also got given to me, which I still got, a full list. And oh, yeah. the down of where my priesthood authority comes from. I can't remember all the names. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it goes back, back. to, to yeah. Joseph Just and me. Oliver Calvary. Yeah. 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 But still a marvellous thing to have. You know what I mean? So I, I think, think like John the Baptist is a busy man because it's him who brings the messages <laughs> to the Church of Christ with the Elijah message. So what other part of your priesthood did you enjoy doing? Well, I enjoyed very much being able to bless and pass the sacrament. Mm. That I did enjoy very much. 
I enjoyed when I reached the Melchizedek priesthood of being able to bestow uh, blessings on people for the sick and you know this and that, as we did do for a lady we brought back to the church called Marjorie Price. Yeah, and she was the most lovely woman I remember. Mm. And I remember when she first told us that she was diagnosed with cancer, and she asked because she knew we'd received the Melchizedek priesthood and we were able to do it. If we would do a comfort blessing for her, which me and Andrew did proceed to do, and surprisingly, for a short time, she seemed to recover. Yeah. And she was delighted. But then as time went on, she went into a sort of relapse. She was admitted into hospital. And what annoyed me and Andrew was the missionaries went up, I think it was the sister missionaries, and Marjorie asked them to let me and Andrew know where she was, that she wanted another blessing from us. Now, we never got that message, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that deeply upset me, yeah. that we weren't there for Marjorie's. Oh, no. So I used to do home teaching a lot, and that was good. You must have done home teaching. Well, I used to go to the uh, teacher's classes, which would be, what is it, Gos the thing you teach from gospel principles. Oh, in the lessons on the, the Sunday, lessons, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, that uh, was good. It, yeah, I found it was all about Joseph Joe Smith. Smith mostly. But, but when you were asked eventually, when you received the Melchizedek, to give the uh, priesthood lessons, that was obviously a bit more complex and things you had to go mm. into, you know what I mean? And you had to do a presentation and everything else. And uh, But home teaching was a duty different. as well. Yeah. But my partner, I had one in Scunthorpe, an older man, and he always used to leave it to the last minute before you had. So this means home teaching, you have to go and visit a family yeah. and you teach them. And you had to get it in before the end of the month of what happened and what needs they wanted. So that, so that was, I really enjoyed that and felt the power of God using me there. Even though now I've taken my name away from the LDS church, I've come off. The baptism thing so but yes i really felt the power then and i'm sure kyle and andrew did and yeah. in our hearts we still have something for the book of mormon um, yeah. and we do yeah. like the missionaries but yeah well it was with me and andrew as brother michael rightly said you'd be asked to give home teaching missions lessons and everything else and that was a great part of the priesthood you know what mm. i mean and me and Andrew did it for, uh, oh, what was them two in the church at the time? Ellen, uh, what was the name? The Stout Lass. Oh. I can't never think of her name. Gemma. Uh, one time was Gemma Gallery, I think. Yeah. And the other was uh, the one that used to smoke a lot. So he's smoking. Oh, you mean Dukes. The uh, Dukes, yeah. Is it Simon and Estelle? Simon and Estelle, that was it. Yeah. We did things with them, and we did things with another lad that was uh, local to us, and again, it's so long George, ago. George, I think. George, I think. Oh, no, was, George was No, the it wasn't man. George, it was... Um, the one we saw on the bus the that's other him. day. Yeah. Yeah. But I can never think of his name when I want to think of Who it. lived in Wingfield. Yeah. But it was great to be able to do that. But we had to, as Brother Michael rightly said, we had to do these things we're in a lot of, and we had to, well, we had to, we were asked to, to make notes, you know what I mean? Of mm. whom we'd visit it, when we visit it, and so forth and so on, you know what I mean? And yeah. either day or such or evening went, you know. And then we used to have look forward to the, what you call the home evenings, in which you'd either be invited to the church for an home evening study or whatever. Oh, yeah. Monday, Monday nights was Just family um, home um, evening. evening. Try yeah. doing that on your own. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of a different guy than that because it's, a lot of worse has gone under the bridge since then. You know what I mean? I've had a lot of distress, a lot of unhappiness. And so, so, like, 
We had a lesson. You don't mind if I say this about no. it, yes, sir. We had a lesson with Jehovah's Witness yesterday, and they were saying we shouldn't add to the Bible. But the Book of Mormon isn't added to a Bible. It's called another testimony of the Bible. So I asked the lady, I said, I said, you know, before the 60s, what Bible did you use? And uh, oh, she said, uh, the King James Bible. And I says, in the 60s, the new, li the new living, uh, the new, new world translation, translation came yeah. in. And uh, she, she sort of said, I go, so you added, like, Jehovah's names in there. So don't you think you were added? <laughs> I was, well, that was my chain of thought. Well, I was thinking, as Brother Michael said there, when they said, because Michael asked them about which, and it was the King James Version, the original King James Version, which I have, and which the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Saints give there. And you know that because in the initial notes it, it has this popish thing or anti popish thing. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, if they use the original King James Version, how is the version they've got now, the New World Translation? It seems to be terribly altered from what's in the King James Version. Yeah, she, she tried to show me that some of the some of the scriptures match but i know some of them don't don't right. and so they say the book of mormon shouldn't be because it's it's not an add-on to the bible because it isn't it's a testimony another it's another witness of yes. jesus christ to the people that came when jesus came to the people in america also this week we found out there's a film out and it's all about uh, the people going to America and, and living together. I think it's Moroni and Nephi. And yeah. yeah, it's yeah. about Moroni yeah. and how the Book of Mormon... Yeah. It's based, inspired on the Book of Mormon. Now, Matthew Gill, who's a friend of mine and um, has his own church, the Restored Branch, shared a copy that he received of it. And it's called The Oath. And I watched the trailer and I thought, this is amazing. This would be worth watching. But um, I've looked for it. It said you can see it on Apple TV or Prime Video. I've had a look on there for it. It's not on there. So I guess in Britain it's not available at the moment. But if you're in the US, I'm sure it is. And you can watch it on those channels. It looks a really well put together film. And uh, so it's inspired by the Book of Mormon. So, yeah. It would really be good if they could see Lehi's dream in it. So, yeah. Well, from the clip I've only seen of it, it's, uh, it looks, I have to say, very ferocious. You know what I mean? Hmm. And it's like many things in the Old Testament. And there were great battles. There were great rivalries. There were great wars. Yeah. And... The, from the brief clip I have seen of the oath, I would like to see, hopefully one day, the full version of it. Well, I did see a film yesterday which was about uh, Mormon, the Mormon pioneers, and it was about a brother called Brother Green who was a, a coloured person going back to them times. And uh, I forget then, it's Summit Pioneer. And... Him, Brig well, he knew Joseph Smith, and he was a a close contact to Joseph Smith. You know, if he needed help in doing stuff, uh, building wise, and Joseph Smith would get in contact. And then he became an advisor for Brigham Young, and Brigham Young came to him, and he he built this hall. He was an axeman, this brother Green, and uh. He built his hut and he said, I want you to go w with this party to winter quarters to build huts and that. But Brigham Young, with them, they were still slaves. So some of they were chained up when they went. Wow. So they had, they had a, 
they had a missionary with them. They went to winter quarters, built some things, and he come back. So the story is about his journey and the journey of the church. And uh, it showed you the real-life pictures of the people, and it was a real good film. I enjoyed it. So, Well, yeah. in them days, Brigham Young's days, some of the teachings of Brigham Young were going to regards race, colour, creeds and everything mm -hmm. and uh, it eventually well after Brigham Young departed this world it come to the church's acceptance of people of colour, know what I mean? Well it, it said in the film there yeah. was a guy and it got a picture of mm -hmm. him who had uh, a co person of colour who had the priesthood yeah. and it showed him being talked down to by some some priesthood members and they they stopped the priesthood and they brought slaves in you know mm. when and then later on you know i'd say in the 70s you know uh people of color got the priesthood then which is they should have had the priesthood before well, i think how that come about it was the political situation in the states at the time in the 60s the civil rights movement and everything mm protests and that. Uh, but it was one of the great grandsons, grandsons yeah. of one of the people who was in yeah. in the priesthood so, at the time this guy they stopped his priesthood. priesthood yeah. But it's a good film and he lived a long life. Uh, at first he was taken away so we're going back to 1840 some of them. Mm. Uh, one of his slave owners is taking him away and his mum gives him a, a a lace necklace with a, with a button on. A boot lace necklace with a button on. And he keeps that all his life. Yeah, so look out. That's on Amazon. Look out for that. I think it's called um, I Can Find Out For You. But I do like the history of the church and stuff. So, yeah. Some of it though wasn't man you at the church at the time the church as people refer to as the Mormon church was a struggling church, you know what I mean? It had many adversaries, many people that were totally against it. There was many misconceptions of the church, there was many untruths told about the church. Um but the actual church history in the beginning was quite quite rough. No, no, yeah. no. And people think of Mormons and the LDS church. It didn't begin there. It began with no. Joseph Smith, Smith going into that as no. a boy, going no. in to pray no. which church he, and he said, start your own. No. The LDS church came away from Nauvoo no. after Joseph Smith was shot. And, you know, so people forget that and, you know, I was a young lad, I was on a search, and finding that book and having the missionaries come round and said, this boy prayed, went to the field and prayed, and God showed himself and said, don't join that church. I felt that feeling myself, and you probably have as well. Well, what it was with me and Andrew, every time the missionaries come, sometimes we were feeling down for one reason or another. I'm not going to go into it. But we got that tap on the door, hmm. and it was the missionaries, sometimes different, because they would swaffle and change them every so often. But every time they knocked at the door, it uplifted things. The minute they entered and sat down, and we did what we needed to do, uh, studying the Gospels and everything else, there was that atmosphere of happiness, yeah. harmony, and that lasted the entire week, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was always a pleasure to have the missionaries bang on the door. Yeah. But we even had that when we lived in Tufton. And um, it wasn't, i say it was about two months after that, as Michael said earlier about the Jehovah's Witnesses. We had them banging on the door. Well, we didn't know, we'd just seen this load of people with mm. pamphlets, you know what I mean? And everyone was closing the curtains and everything else. Well, the knock come on the door. 
And me and Andrew, as Christians, we didn't turn them away. You know what I mean? We listened to what they had to say. Yeah. We accepted the little pamphlets and read them. and Not that we necessarily agreed with them, but I remember saying recently, because their uh, pamphlets, Watchtower and Away, I remember a long time ago, now this is where they differ again, so they're talking about changing things. In their things, they had the, the cross and the two uh, thieves and that beside them and the cross. Well, they were later to change all that and instead of the cross, it become the stake, a torture stake, just like a pole, you know what I mean? No cross. So I remember saying to that, to her, uh, they looked at me as much to say, oh, no, no, no. I said, well, I've seen them. Because yeah. I originally had some of your religion and pamphlets, Watchtower and Away, you know what I mean? <laughs> In which Jesus was depicted on the cross. Hmm. So, yeah, I, 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 I like having lessons with Jehovah's with Witness or any other church. Because it means we're sort of trying to work together. Yeah. And in the Fellowship of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship, we want people from all faiths to come and join us. So that's why I do studies with them. But it's the only way the churches are going to come together is when God come, when Je Jesus comes back. Because they're, they're all saying... We are the true church. We know this, the Jehovah's Witnesses do it. The Mormons well, do it. Yeah. But, but it don't stop me having a study with them. I, I just like, she was saying that the Book of Mormon is, is something to do with the Bible, but it wasn't. But then I said to her, what about your New World translation? And you've got other writers as well. Hmm. They're not added to the Bible. Ellen G. White wrote from the Seventh-day Adventist yes. Church. She's wrote lots of books, but they're not added to the Bible. Steps to Christ. Gospel and you've got Thomas and everything else. Yeah. And I would Gospel say Ma Mary, Mary of Magdalene. No, Mary, Mary Magdalene. Becker, the one. Oh, Mary, Mary, wasn't she, oh, what was it? And she then, had a crown and cross on it. I can't yeah, believe it. It's Mary, Mary Baker Eddy or something like that. Mary Baker Eddy, Eddy yeah. wrote about health. Health. And you've got Stur Sturgeon. Science. Charles yeah. Sturgeon and theologers like. So I don't think any of them are adding to the Bible. The Book of Mormon is just another testimony oh, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So I guess we best finish up Can there. I just say, what makes me think is that because what we have in the Bible, King James or whatever, that was all decided when the Roman Catholic Church totally dominated and ruled everything. Now, there are literally quite hundreds of manuscripts from the Gospel of Philip, the Gospel of Thomas, Mary of Magdalene, and they were just a few. They were called the Aprochia. Well, at one time, they were part of the Bible. But... At the Council of Nicaea, they threw a hell of a lot out. So what was in the Bible originally? Yeah. So would the Jehovah's Witness say, oh, if they would have included the Holy Christ, they would have been adding to the Bible. It was already originally part of the Bible. So that was the Nicene Creed, Creed. Huh? with Constantine Creed. in charge, where huh? they decided what went in the Bible. And we did mention that to the, the Witnesses yesterday, and they did say, Oh, yeah, that's where they decided right. what goes in the, the Bible. Council. Right. So that's, that's messing with the Bible, really, isn't it? And uh, there's another one called the Testament of Marcion. Now, Marcion was a great uh, philosopher, thinker, and everything else. And he rejected totally the Old Testament. Hmm. And that was also omitted from the Bible. You know what I mean? And he believed in uh, Mark, Philip, Luke, and things like yeah. that. So nobody can say who's added what to the Bible or 
who's tried to add to the Bible because no one knows. There's that many manuscripts that have been discovered and are continuing to be discovered going right back to Jesus. And there's even an actual documented letter now from Pontius Pilate who yeah. condemned Christ in which he totally speaks up for Jesus Christ. But that was omitted. Yeah. So we have other scriptures now. We have the Chronicles of Aranat with Matthew Gill's church. And we have the sealed Book of Mormon with Brother Mauricio. And then I think there will be more coming. So I guess we're going to have to finish up now yeah. because the video will be too long. It's been really good. Uh, and I just want you to, to remember we are the fellowship of Christ. We fellow with Christ. All are welcome. If you want to know more about our church, David will post at the top the website address, and he'll also put my email, church email address at the bottom. And we want you to get in contact with us. Um, if you're in a place, if you're in an organized religion, it could be Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, it could be anything, and you don't feel at home there, you don't feel that you can have a personal relationship with Jesus, and you can, you can, you can have your own thoughts and your own things about Jesus, because the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. Just have a look at those things or get in contact with us. I'm going to finish up with a prayer now, but don't forget, Thursday night is prayer night, half seven in the United Kingdom. I think that's around two o'clock in America. So if you bow your heads with me. Loving Creator God, El Shaddai, we thank you for this time that you've been with us, Lord. And we thank you for this talk today on priesthood and other things. And... Uh, we ask that this message you get out to everybody and that they can come join the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship or the Fellowship of Christ and know there's a place for them there and uh, a home, a loving home. And we pray for the leaders of our church and uh, their family, David and 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 his wife, and we pray for Brant, and we pray for Mark Cleaver as well, who joins us, and uh, we pray for everybody that watches this video, that you will get something from it, and that it will open your hearts and minds, and to get that personal, very personal relationship with Jesus the Christ. And I say these things in his name, Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Shalom.